Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well today. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Carol and for today's video, I have a what's for dinner. If you are new here, just so you know, I post a new what's for dinner video every Monday on my channel. I'll also go ahead and link my playlist up here in the iCards for y'all. So if you'd like to reference that, then you can. But if you like videos like this, then please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And then also y'all, I wanted to let you know that I am gonna be doing a Q and A on my channel next week. So if you have any questions for me, then please leave them in the comment section below. I would love it if you would participate in this Q and A and ask me any questions that you might have. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Good morning and we are having meatloaf tonight. So I have two pounds of, this is just organic, 100% grass-fed ground beef. And then I just use the McCormick's meatloaf packet. And then I have a, and I follow the instructions on the back of the meatloaf packet. I have one fourth a cup of plain breadcrumbs and then half a cup of milk and two eggs lightly beaten. And then I'm gonna put it in my refrigerator. It's Monday morning actually. So I'm gonna put it in here put some um, saran wrap over it and then put it in my refrigerator for this afternoon so I don't have to prep it whenever I get home from work because I don't have time to prep it and cook it whenever I get home from work. Um, and then I'm also gonna be making mashed potatoes tonight so I'm gonna cut those potatoes up um, so they're ready for me to boil whenever I get home tonight also. Okay, I'm home now, I have my meatloaf. I cut up about or chopped up about a quarter of an onion um, a medium onion and I mix that in with the meatloaf mixture because I um, I do like onion in our meatloafs but I don't like to let it sit all day because it just overtakes the meatloaf I feel like when the onions marinate in the meat so I went ahead and mix that in and then I'm gonna just put it in my oven on uh, 375 for an hour and then I'm gonna get my um my potatoes going so we can have the potatoes so i'm gonna put this on for an hour i'm gonna do and then um i'm gonna make the glaze and i'll show you all how i make the glaze for the meatloaf as well my handsome boy you want more snack huh daddy's not home yet daddy's not home yet what are you doing Okay, here is my glaze that I made to go over the meatloaf. I just used ketchup. It's actually organic ketchup, and yes, it makes a difference because organic ketchup is so much better. And I put in a table, one tablespoon of brown sugar, about a mm, tablespoon or two of Worcestershire sauce, and um, about a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. And I'm going to Mix this up really good, and then I'm gonna think I'm gonna add a little bit more ketchup. Um, mix this up really good, and then put it on top of my um, meatloaf. Pop it back in the oven. It has about let's see, 25 minutes left. I've got my potatoes going in some chicken broth, and then back here I have my corn going, and I'm gonna add in some of this better than good. Um, this is jalapeno bacon jam, and I'm going to add this into um, my corn and see how that tastes. I've never done that before, but I'm going to see. All right, here is our meatloaf that we had on Monday, and I made mashed potatoes and gravy, and I used the HEB gravy in the packet, and I will never do that again. It wasn't bad, but the McCormick's is so much better, so that is not somewhere where I am gonna try and save some money next time. But here is our meatloaf, corn, and mashed potatoes with gravy. This was really good. My husband loves meatloaf, so this was definitely a crowd pleaser. All right, here is our dinner for Tuesday. I'm gonna do spaghetti with these meatballs. I have these left over from uh, my daughter's birthday party. So I'm just gonna plop these meatballs in there and then add some pasta sauce, which this is our favorite pasta sauce. I do have to add like salt, garlic powder, and some Italian seasoning to this. Um, and then I got some petite diced tomatoes. And normally 
I use the regular diced tomatoes in my spaghetti, but I decided to try the petite. Y'all let me know if you use um, diced tomatoes in your spaghetti, which do you use? Um, so that's what's going to be for dinner tonight, something really easy. And then I also have some of this Texas toast that I'm going to put in there. So, well, not put in there, but I'm going to cook this on the side. Okay, I decided that I wanted asparagus too. So what I did is I just sprayed the bottom of my pan with this avocado oil, chopped the ends off of my asparagus, and then I put some garlic powder, onion powder, and some fajita seasoning. So here's this. I'm gonna pop it into the oven on 350. All right, y'all, here is our spaghetti and meatballs with our garlic cheese bread and our asparagus all plated up. I love to have a vegetable in there. I know this is kind of weird and not everybody has a vegetable with their spaghetti, but I just love vegetables. So I kind of try to throw them in there every chance I can get, but I only get one meatball because I'm not that big of a fan of meatballs. My kids and my husband love them. So I have to throw them in there every once in a while just to keep everybody happy. Um, I prefer a meat sauce rather than meatballs with a sauce. Um, so this dinner was really good on this night. Okay guys, good morning. It is Wednesday morning. I am making sour cream enchiladas tonight. Um, I'm pre-making my enchiladas. I'm gonna roll them up, put them in my refrigerator, and I'm also gonna pre-make my sauce. Um, it just makes everything so much easier for me whenever I get home from work but I've already shredded up my chicken. This is just a rotisserie chicken that I shredded up on Sunday whenever I bought it at the grocery store. And then I'm gonna put in um, two tablespoons of um, chili powder, a tablespoon or a teaspoon of garlic salt and a teaspoon of cumin. And then I'm gonna try to use the mixer and see how that works. I've seen a couple of YouTube um, moms use this mixer and they said it works amazing for shredding chicken. So I'm gonna try it on this. And of course you guys, I will link this recipe below. It's the first time I'm ever making it. So I will let y'all know how um, it comes out. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and this goes in here and then I'm gonna shred it up and then I'll roll the tacos and then I'll start on my sauce. All right y'all, so I tried to shred up my chicken with this mixer and it worked well, <laughs> but it flung my chicken all over my kitchen. So I don't know if it's because I didn't have enough chicken in the bowl, but I had to transfer it to a bigger bowl. So if you're gonna try this method, then I would definitely recommend that you use a bigger bowl. Um, it is quite messy, uh, but it is handy and it does work faster than just shredding it up yourself with your hands. Um, as far as the quesadillas go, I just, or not quesadillas, the enchiladas go, I just rolled those up. I put a little bit of the filling inside of the tortillas. I just used regular flour tortillas and I just rolled those up and then I put some cellophane over this baking dish and then I popped it into my refrigerator because remember y'all, this is in the morning before I am going to work. So I just roll them all up, get it ready. And this is like a hack for mamas that are busy. You just don't have time to do it if you're a working mom um, at the end of the day. So just put some cellophane over it, put it in your refrigerator and it'll be ready for you whenever you get home from work in the afternoon. Okay y'all, and for the sauce, I just started off with some chicken broth and some flour. I add about half of the flour of what the recipe recommended. I will leave the exact recipe in the description box below that I used. And then I moved this off the heat, put my sour cream and my cheese in it. And then once this was all blended together really nicely, I put it into a Tupperware and then I put that with my um, enchiladas that I had rolled up in the refrigerator. And then whenever I got home from work, I just poured the sauce over all those, well, first I greased my pan and then I poured the sauce all over my enchiladas, made my sides, and then we had dinner. All right, y'all, here's these enchiladas whenever they came out of the oven. I do have to say, these were really good, but I think that I left them in the oven too long. So only cook them how long the 
recipe says. I think it says to cook them for like 10 to 15 minutes. I will only be cooking them for 10 to 15 minutes next time because the sauce got a little bit chunky and I think that's the reason why. But anyway, here's the rice, here's the beans. Like I said, the rice and the beans are so good. If you have an HEB, definitely pick up at least the rice. If you don't like borracho beans, then this Mexican rice is so good. All right, y'all, and then on Easter Sunday, whenever we got home from church, I popped some ham and Swiss sliders, some turkey and American sliders, Italian sliders, and chicken Parmesan sliders into my oven, and we had those for lunch, and then also had some pasta salad and some macaroni salad on the side, and this is what we had for our Easter Sunday lunch. I hope you guys had a wonderful Easter with your family, and that's gonna do it for this What's For Dinner video. I hope you enjoyed. Like I said, if you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and please leave me a question down below for my Q&A, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.